Good afternoon, everyone. I'm back. And this is the updated sponsor list of January 2018. And I would like to give a big thanks to everyone that sponsors my channel. Thank you very much. Okie dokie. So what I'm going to start with, I've been doing some uh, marbling. This is kind of a, a, a nice uh, effect. This is when you put Indian inked, the Chinese inked on a um, water thickened with the cell cellulose. Yeah. Then you get all these little dots in them. That's kind of nice. Then I started to do it on just plain water. And as you can see, if you frame it like that, I think that's awesome. I really love that. You know, you can just take out little bits that you really like. Look at that. That is just, you know, it's so subtle and not complex, but it's beautiful. So I really love that. Then I tried some more and see if you frame that, how beautiful that looks. You could frame it any which way you want. Even that is beautiful. So if you haven't already marbled, I'd, I'd suggest you really try. All you need is a couple of brushes and you probably have it. And this is just on plain tap water. So, you know, it's not, I think the, the uh, Chinese ink is something like two or three dollars. And then you can make these beautiful uh, things. And if you're, you're visiting um, uh, art shows, you could have like a little section of these. And I'm pretty sure people are going to love them. Look at that. Is that cute or what? And this is just black and white. Look how, how that, that is so appealing to the eye. All those beautiful, isn't that beautiful? I love it. I really do. I don't know why, but I really love it. Well, then this one, I really love this one. I need a bigger mat though, but look at that. Is that the cute? I was just so gobsmacked that this came out of it. This is, um, again, the cellulose uh, in the water, just a little bit. And um, then I dropped the, uh, the Chinese ink on it. And I used some uh, Kodak uh, Photo Flow. Or you can use the Oxgel. But it makes these little things. I don't know what it is. Then I took a, a stick. And I put the stick in a water with one drop of um, ox gall and you could just push it into a pattern and you don't touch the black but by putting the uh, the wooden stick in and it's covered with the uh, ox gall which pushes out away the uh, the paint you I got this and I thought this was awesome I know big deal about <laughs> black and white stuff but it is I really like it even this, look at that. It's just interesting. And um, when you look at it from up close, let me get you in close. There you are. Look at that. And I'm already thinking that I might do something uh, with a uh, black ink pen, do something with it. But I just think they're really beautiful. I might even try uh, doing that. I, I might be going to an art show this year and I might do one section with all these things, with all these black and whites. I really like them. You know, what you can do is buy these mats. They're really uh, very cheap. And then don't frame them, but just put, put them in a, in a mat like this. And then with cling wrap, you can just make them into uh, little paintings. And that way you don't have to invest in a lot of frames. You just put them in cling wrap and then sell them as is and people can frame them themselves. This was uh, something I tried with a little bit of color. This one is a little bit more color. I think it's a little bit too busy, but well, maybe someone likes a little bit more color. Who knows? This one I swirled it uh, in, in the water. That was kind of cute. I'll be doing some of these, I think, uh, this week. I'm not sure. Maybe this weekend. But it is pretty. And um, to tell you the truth, it's really relaxing to do. And you get all zen. And afterwards, you know, it, you don't have to do much. All this is is printer paper. 
and when you take it out you rinse it under the, your uh, tap and that's it you lay it flat on the table and it'll dry and then if you're going to frame it all you have to do is uh, iron it iron them flat that's it see that they're a little bit like that but you can iron them or if you um, have time you can just put them between a couple of really heavy books put books on top of them and that will straighten them right out now then I was setting up I was going to do uh, some um, uh, w uh, fluid watercolors but then I came across my uh, weekly we get a lot of this stuff so I thought you know because you want to learn Dutch and all that kind of stuff I'll show you some of the things that we have in our shops so $8.99 I think that's a lot of money for uh, for one of those but as you can see this is a, a little bit of uh, how we um, furnish our homes this is totally in this is sort of the uh, industrial look that is really in at the moment I don't really do that but as you can see here those those chairs that's really uh, from way back then uh, let's see another one. Oh, these are beds these are the beds we have and we just started to get these box spring beds and they're pretty uh, expensive if you have one like um, this is a, like a king size it's 2,000 euros that's a lot of money this one is 2600 euros that's even more so they're pretty uh, expensive we usually had beds like that you know if you had a, a, a adjusting bed and they're as you can see only 200 uh, euros at the moment because they're going out because everyone's buying box springs now I know you had box springs a long long time ago in America but we're a little slow <laughs> okay so um, well it's all kinds of stuff that we uh, that's not interesting at all what's this it's not interesting uh, this one this is a, a, a really big one sort of like a Walmart but for only furniture and here you have a box spring it's uh, a kind of um, uh, not so uh, wide narrow but it's 195 so that's okay <laughs> you guys are gonna be thinking what she doing on the video <laughs> what is this but I know a couple of people have been asking about, you know, what's going on in Holland. So I thought I'd just show you. Now, here comes something. If you're ever in Holland, you have to eat this. We call them Tompussen. And Tompus, if I really uh, translate it, it's uh, Tomcat. <laughs> but Pus is uh, spelled P-O-E-S. But they made a little thing about it, so they they named it Tom Pussin. But these are the oh, they are delicious. They really are. And as you can see, you get four for one euro, and that is pretty cheap. <laughs> okay, so a kilo pears, one euro. I use a lot of those. Those are I don't know even how to call them in English, but they're usually where the little peas grow in but these are really flat and you eat the the outside so uh avocado two for one ninety of uh, yeah 969 then we go to the meat <coughs> that's um beef one kilo six euros that's beef minced beef that's uh 500 grams to 50 so you'll get a, a feel of what living in Holland uh, costs but this is a real cheap sh shop and we drink a lot of soya this is soya stuff oh, no, the sort of yogurt stuff um, oh big American pizzas yes we like those three of them for four euros so that is totally crazy cheap and let's see what else do we have oh, a lot of cheese of course because we're in Holland and Holland has a lot of cheese here's our coffee we drink coffee 
so much differently than in the USA because when I had my first cup of coffee in the USA I thought what is this did they wash out the cup and serve it because it doesn't taste like coffee it has to be like we are like Italian people we like a good really strong cup of coffee that is what we like so that's about it of course a lot of Heineken you all know Heineken so you got let's see you get 1250 you get all those bottles I don't drink like I told you a couple of times I don't like it and we do have a lot of um, a lot of uh, um, wines and beers and all that kind of stuff because of course we're close to France so we get the good wines but I'm not much of a drinker that's all the furniture more furniture this is one of those really cheap shops this is a German shop you want to see how much a kitchen costs the whole kitchen here is uh, 4,000 euros all-inclusive this is a really big kitchen 6,500 I'm more of this type of a kitchen I like this it's more the uh, country style that's what I like and more of these sofas we have a lot of L sofas they like that see all else so <laughs> I hope you're enjoying yourself me showing you what we all have in the shops yes okay this is dog food and animal food so you don't want to see that that's another grocery store see cheese you open it up cheese because we're in Holland and lots and lots of vegetables we have our broccoli that is pretty expensive because that's one piece for uh, 90 cents I find that a little bit on the uh, expensive side of course we have all those that's the meats okay now I have one more this is another one this is another grocery store and this is oh this is one's really close to my work but it has the really cheap stuff see that 500 for a sofa and they have kitchens too and chairs oh here are the kitchens whole kitchen 3500 2500 yeah, it's kind of cool this is what we cook on usually you know all flat induction they call it that's what we cook on most of us and a little bit of stuff that you know you can use around the house nothing I can use at the moment vacuum cleaners 35 44 60 but those are really cheap because uh, if you want one of the top brands you'll pay between 200 and 300 euros okay we're through what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna be showing a little bit about um, the fluid uh, colors and I've set up a lot and what I want to do is wet the paper as you can see now a Dutch word to learn because I think it's a word that everyone should know is water if you need water in another country you really want to know how it's uh, named so it's the easiest because we call it water <laughs> it's even spelled the same <laughs> isn't that cool so you learn a Dutch word, water. Uh, you guys say water, and we say water. So you learned a good word. Now I'm going to be dropping uh, ink on here, just randomly. Look at that. That's pretty. And what I'm uh, going to do, uh, this is for some kind of a background. So I'm adding more water, as you can see and I'm making it so the corners are covered 
And because the, the uh, paper uh, is wet when I started, you'll see that you can drop on it and it won't leave a mark when you come over it with your brush. See that? If I were to do that on dry paper, I, uh, I'd have a really hard time to get the spots off. So that's that. Clean the brush. Now I want something a little bit turquoisey because I'm going to be loading it up with a lot of uh, a lot of paint. See, that's where it goes. That was turquoise. Then I need something that looks a little greenish. That's kind of nice. And I want it to be uh, really wet because I'm going to do something in a bit to make it look a little prettier. So that's green. And you can see that my uh, paper is starting to uh, warp. But you can um, avoid that if you just stick it down uh, on the table before you start your painting. <coughs> and it's always, with me, it's always these colors because I love greens and blues. Just a little bit here. Whoops, forgot to shake it. You have to shake this stuff. That's it, that's nice. Now the funny thing is, I hope I'm going to check this, this time I'm going to check it because I have, I'm seeing a lot more color on here than I see on the monitor. And I've said that once before, but I didn't check on YouTube what you guys are seeing, so I'll be checking that. Okie dokie. Now I want something that is really nice and purple. Let's see, that's purple, purple, purple. I'm not going to do the purple up here. I'm going to try and keep the purple down here. Let's see, yeah, that's pretty. But now you have to watch out because you don't want to overdo it because then it starts to, uh, you know, the, the, the colors get muddy, so you don't want to do that. But I think this is about as much as I want. That's it. Now comes the uh, the part where this is a very coarse sea salt, and we're going to put that on. And you can already see what's going to happen because the sea salt is going to be pulling all that excess excess stuff, uh, paint into it, and then you'll see these um, really light pieces coming up. So. I think I need a little bit more here because here's a lot of water. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. Now here I can already see that the uh, the crystals are turning green. Here I can see them turning purple. So they're sucking up all that excess uh, fluids, and we'll have to wait a long time beca because this has to totally dry. And then I can come in with my next layer and uh, that will be done with a brush that is a little finer because this is really big. This is for washing, you know, making big, big pieces of uh, paint. Let's see if I still got some color in there. Yes, I do. Just want to do a little down here. Bring that color in. Okie dokie. That looks good. There's a little hair there. I'll take that out later. But these colors, I lo love these colors. And with that little bit of purple down there, I think that's good, you know, a starting uh, point. So we have the blues, we have the greens, and we have the purples. Maybe a little, let's see, a little pink. 
I like where there's always a little pink with the purple. Just like that. Washing out my brush. That's good. Gotta make it work a little bit like that. We'll see how that works when it's finished. Now these colors, I have them in my shop for the people that are living in uh, Europe. They are something like two euros 40 or something like that. So uh, you don't really need much. As you saw me uh, just, you know, use a couple of drops to color this whole page. And these are 30 milli or 32 milliliters. And they go a long way and you don't need all the colors. They have, you know, when they, um, when they made it, I'll show you how many. These are green. These are all greens, but you don't need all the greens. You know, if you were to to, uh, to buy something like, I don't know, 12, 12 uh, colors, you're set. You can do so much with 12 colors. So the colors I used, that was this one for 50, turquoise, the uh, violet uh, azul, blue violet, that's 320. I used the uh, the green. That's gold olive 580. This blue, the 440 process blue. And let's see. I think I put this one in 120. So here are five colors. Oh, and the pink of course, 340. Yes, that's it. So you have six colors and you can go really you can make a lot of uh, beautiful colors with that now i'm gonna um oh i can't get you down so i'll have to pull it up i will show you how the salt is already getting into there let's see if i can get you in really close see that so the salt is already doing its work and we'll have to wait till it's totally dry and I am going to take this off here because that's a, just a little bit too much water and it will leave a, a different uh, pattern. You don't want that. So where there's too much paint, you can just blot it out there. There we go. Now I'm, I'm using a very coarse uh, sea salt, but what you can also do is use uh, rice that's something that you know pulls a moisture because if you um, live in a humid place you'll already know that if you put a couple of grains of rice in your uh, salt it never gets you know stuck together so that's uh, something that you can use and well really anything you can put on here that soaks up a little bit of moisture will leave a pattern even here as you see those little spots here that's a tiny bit of salt that just rolled over there. And I'm gonna leave that because I just like it the way it is. When I come back in and do another layer of color, um, you'll see that you'll still see all these little patterns that the uh, salt made. So that's, uh, that's the good thing. <coughs> that's what you want. Just a little bit more off here because that is really wet. So that's, um, that's it for now. We'll have to wait uh, at least a couple of hours before uh, this is totally dry and I can brush off the salt. But uh, I'll be back and I'll show you how I build this up. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to do a, a pen, pen drawing on top. But if you want to know which ones I'm using, I will show you up close because they sell it not only in my shop, but a lot of shops. This is it. It's liquid watercolor. And when you are ready with this, you do have to spray it, you know, give it an UV protection because that's what you have to, you have to do that with this kind of stuff. You don't do have to do it with real uh, watercolor paints, you know, the ones in the little naps or in the little tubes. You don't have to do that. Although I would because, uh, see how these are, keep getting bigger <laughs> it's really uh really doing what i really like so um well that's just how it works so oh yeah about the varnishing yeah i would use spray because when you're really ready 
anything you use with this has to be waterproof so if you're going to be uh, drawing on top with pen you know you want to read on the pen that it says waterproof because when you're going to varnish it it's going to be uh, moistened it get gets moisture and then uh, you know if it's not waterproof it'll run sometimes it gives really beautiful effects but i would go for the uh the waterproof stuff okay i see you just one more little bit that i want a little bit more salt on here that's it this is really really i don't know uh, if you do the video back and forth you'll see that this just grows it's so beautiful i love it and you know you don't have total control over it but in the end it gives you such a beautiful pattern that you know you'll think wow that is beautiful okay okay guys gotta go end of the video i taught you a little bit about holland and uh, you now you can say water in dutch water yes just say it a couple of times mag ik een glas water may i have a glass of water mag ik een glas water that's it so see you all love you all to pieces liebe euch alle hope for you allemaal bye bye